Hey, this is the pizza here, and I'm trying a Necropolis of Mirror solo. And uh, this solo is going to be different than all the other solos I've done. Well, actually, I think I've only done two others: the Windmill and Forsaken Abbey. But this one, I actually choose not to solo the whole dungeon. I choose not to solo most of it because uh, past the room after Magister. Gumas, uh, just becomes very tedious and, uh, well, it's just not worth it to solo it past that point if you can't one hit or two hit almost every single creature in the dungeon, which since I'm a, since I'm a tank, I can't. So the main reason to try to solo this would be to gather, a uh, Essence, which you use for your level 35 elite skill. I think I need Ancient Spirit Essence for my Priest Secondary. And, uh, there's also... I can't remember the other types of Essence, actually. But that's the, that'd be the main reason to go and solo this. So, the very beginning, it's nothing special, just these guys. They don't really do anything other than hit you. Uh, there are horror crystals, which there's one on my left, and horror crystals will occasionally fear you. Yeah, you, you, horror crystals are the green one, uh, hatred crystals are the red ones, and sorrow crystals, which you'll see later, are kind of bluish purple. Yes, yeah, so there you see the horror crystal. I'm not sure if he fears me in this fight, but... Yeah, they'll fear you most of the time. And then there's also these Shadows of Desire, which I only fight, I think, one of them in this video, because I choose not to fight most of them. Uh, the main reason I choose not to fight most of the Shadows of Desire is because they start out most of the time doing this uh, skill called Dream of Gold, which basically turns you into a treasure chest, which... Unfortunately, you can't loot yourself, so <laughs> there's no treasure to be had. But it turns you into a treasure chest for only two or three seconds. The real pain with those guys, though, comes after that. Most of the time, they'll cast this spell called Mana Rift, which is basically a mana drain spell. And for someone like me who does not like to use potions, like, I... I rarely use potions. I try to avoid using them as much as possible. As you can tell by the, uh, if you look on the right side of my screen in the very right skill bar, you can see the potions I have are the level 41 ones equipped, and some of them are furious potions. So here I speed up the video by two times because the fight with Magister Gumas and, like I was saying about the potions, they're the level 41 ones and then some furious potions which I got from the... Christmas event. So, the potions aren't really a factor for me. I don't think I use a single one in this video. And also, I ran uh, another solo of Forsaken Abbey a couple days ago just to see how much quicker I'd gotten. And last time, I think I said it was around 40 minutes, which wasn't very fast. This time, I ran it around 20 minutes, a little over 20 minutes. And that's without using any potions. And also, with the new patches, they have changed some of the knight skills. The mana return now returns different amounts of mana depending on how many holy seals are on your target. So, like, one holy seal will give you a certain amount of mana, three holy seals will give you the most. And also, punishment now factors in stamina at the... It gives 10% of the stamina... Like, let's see how I can phrase this. 10% of whatever stamina is will turn into damage that goes on your target. And I'm not sure if the stamina is taken from you or your enemy, but uh, it figures in the stamina, so I think it does more damage now, which is quite nice. And so Magister Gumas, he only has two real skills that you need to watch out for. Uh, dark power release, which you saw right there, and death sickle. And I tried to try to stun him whenever he's casting those spells to 
prevent him from casting him. And here I'm just looting everything to make up for the repair costs. But he'll try to... He'll just keep casting them over and over and over again. One time I... I stopped uh, his dark power release two times in a row. But he just cast it the third time and got me. And since I only have two stun skills, I couldn't do anything about it. So, but other than that, he's pretty easy. And looking back at this, I remember my, uh... The video I put out of the first ne uh, Necropolis of Mirrors run I did, where our party, uh, we got wiped on Magic Street Goo Moss. And now I'm just looking back at this, like, wow, how much stronger I've gotten since then. Now I can take him on all by myself without any trouble. And so here are the Sorrow Crystals I was talking about. And they will silence you and. See if I can, uh. I can't read this stuff under the player effects. But yeah, so they're gonna they're gonna silence you every now and then. Nothing too bad though. And this is the room where I stop. I don't go past this room because of the reason, like I said, it just gets way too tedious if you can't one hit or or two hit everything in the dungeon. So just beaten on the sorrow crystal. And also, uh, one more thing I heard about was. Uh, they're having a new chapter in Runes of Magic, chapter 3. I think it's called The Elder. Let's see, it was The Elder Civilization or something like that. Can't quite remember, but. I don't know about new races. Most people suspect they're going to add dwarves, which. It's pretty awesome. They're going to add a whole new, uh, whole new area, just like they did with the Elven Prophecy. And yeah, I'm really liking the way they keep expanding on this game. Because for a free game, they really do put out a lot of patches and a lot of effort into keeping the game fresh and new. Because they just released a patch where uh, we get to finally kill the Demon Lord. Which, uh, when I get there, I'll show you guys. But the next thing I'm probably going to be doing is Treasure Trove. Which is where I can find Traitor. The, hopefully, last, uh, well not last, because... There's always going to be new weapons to find, but the weapon I'll keep for the majority of my time until they release something that's just super powerful. So there's one of the Shadows of Desire. And, uh, yeah, that, uh, what he's doing right now is the Mana Rift. And you can clearly hear it. Yeah, it's that sound that goes from a low pitch to a high pitch over and over again. And... You watch, if you watch my uh, man in bar while he does that, it just goes down very quickly. There's the dream of gold, turns into a chest. And I think this is where I just stopped fighting after this point. Because the mana drain, since most of my damage comes from my skills, the mana drain really has an effect on me. And I just can't do much about it. Yeah, there it is again. Uh, negative... How much did it say? 370 mana? No matter what I do, I just can't keep up with that. And I don't want to use my potions, because like I said, I just don't like to use potions. So, I'm just going to finish off the Sorrow Crystal, and I actually didn't get any essence this run, which kind of sucked. But you need 15 essence, and so far I've only got one. It was actually not even from the solos I've done, which I've only done two solos though, so can't complain too much. I did find uh, two, and I think I remember the names, I think they were Mirror Essence, and oh, I wish I could remember the last one, but I can't. So yeah, I found two Mirror Essence and I think one of the other Essence. Oh, Study Essence, that's it. Yeah, so I found two Mirror Essence and one Study Essence. So I'm just going to finish off the Shadow Desire. And I think uh, here I show you where you can get your level 35 elite skill. So if you run out of Necropolis of Mirrors, go to your right uh, along the hillside. You'll find the guy who gives you your level 35 elite skills. So that was my kind of, sort of, solo of Necropolis of Mirrors. Till next time.